Oh. Okay, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, welcome to this safe space uh, of sharing and caring. My name is Ana Miró. I'm an artist, a singer, a musician, a composer. I'm a writer. I'm also a spiritual guide, an oracle, uh, what you can call a channeler. And I'm also a holistic vocal coach. And today I wanted to share with all of you a conversation that I'm going to have here with my dear Maria. I will introduce her to you and we will see where this conversation goes uh, and where it takes us. So uh, Maria Surumanyu, um, <laughs> she starts her artistic path as Kalash in 2017. She is what we call an autodidactic in music. She composed and released two LPs and two EPs, and she has been playing live throughout Europe and the United States. Her soundscape goes from experimental pop to electro and indie rock. Her voice dances between light and dark in a contemplative but spontaneous expression. Maria and I met back in 2011, 12. I am not sure. What do you think? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe around that, that time, yeah. Um, we were connected by the talented uh, and special Gonzalo Duarte. Maybe one day I'll invite him to talk here too. Um, and uh, from my records, uh, she started having vocal coaching sessions with me back in 2016, I think. I think so. Maybe, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. um, she's an inspiration as an adventurous artist and especially as a singer. Her dedication to her voice and comfort in confronting her fears, blocks, and shadows is an amazing magical experience of both courage, strength, and resilience. So today I wanted to talk with Maria to share with all of you some of our views about creative expression, how, how our voices are deeply connected to ourselves, who we are, who we think we are, who we want to be, and how connecting to your voice, connecting to the way you express yourself can create magic in your life. So this is my introduction. Welcome, everybody, and welcome, Maria. <laughs> wow, thank you for that <laughs> introduction. <laughs> this is what uh, was um, a spontaneous like uh, invitation to you for starting some conversations about creative expression. I think the first one, right? Yeah, this is the very first one. Right? <laughs> the trial. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you first, just like, how do you feel? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. A bit nervous, I confess. So yeah. <laughs> let's do this. And I would ask you, uh, what did you feel that call to you in music like what what drawn to you to express yourself through music um well so I started in 2017 and before that I was um working mostly in fashion and visual arts and I was music was my inspiration to make fashion and painting or anything that I did artistically um, but I never realized how strong it was or how I felt very incomplete in my creative work I, I didn't really re realize what was missing and I was just really obsessed with music but I was still in the mindset that because I didn't have a musical background as in like musical education I thought that it wasn't for me. It was for my musician friends and I was just their friend that would like dress them or, you know, I was inspired by it, but I was just no courage at all to do it. But then I um, obviously being interested in the DIY culture and uh, reading a lot about it and about other musicians that especially women musicians that did it with no, like me, like just <laughs> out of necessity in a way, you know, like, um, yeah. 
um, because I knew I, I needed, uh, there was a void that I needed to fill that I just didn't know how. And um, then, yeah, so I guess like all that interest in the DIY culture, um, punk, um, that gave me the courage to start um, my own project, which initially I was going to do with my brother. Like we talked about it and I was like, okay, great. Okay, I, I will do it, but I'll do it with someone. Yes. And then um, he was, we were we, we sort of booked a rehearsal and then he was like, oh, sorry, I have no time, but you do it alone. And I was like, what? No. <laughs> and I think it was around that time that I started having classes with you and like started, I, 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 I gathered, um, I got my Casio, the Casio I bought when I was like 10 and I started, you know, <laughs> trying to make demos and then, yeah. Okay, okay. I, maybe I'm getting too long. No, no, this, no, no, no. In this uh, answer, but uh, yeah. So then, uh, so this project where I was, I started making the songs, and then I was also dealing with all the visual aspects of it. So it's sort of all the things that I did before, fashion, visual arts, and music. Those were my like I gathered all those three things into my my solo music project. So yes, now it's now it makes sense yeah that's that's why it's visually it's very like complete like I would say everything matches with everything yeah. and well, so you you get drawn to like kind of your universe like um and and that's uh another question that I have like um what is like your creative process actually um how do your songs come up to you are are the songs the first thing that pops up is it like the atmosphere like uh is it clothes like fashion like how you look on a feet like sometimes I I imagine for me as a artist right when I have a song in my mind but what I what I can get from it is like visuals mm -hmm. so I just like try to reproduce in a sound way uh what i see in my mind's eye let's say <laughs> how is it for yeah, you that makes sense um i i i'm trying to change the way i start um, um my songs but uh, i i i would definitely say that i don't i don't feel like a musician it, i don't mean it in a uh, being trying to be humble way uh, i really don't but i I do, I would say I make music, but I wouldn't say I am a musician. Also, you know, obviously I, I still have the imposter, imposter syndrome, you know, very, <laughs> within, it's not that way, don't worry. So like, I, I, I need to have a feeling, not even really, I'm very visual, but I wouldn't, I don't, it's not really a visual, it's more like a feeling or a team, a team or a word that I start with. So I always start with the lyrics in a way, I don't need to have the, full lyrics but I need to at least have a title sometimes I have the title of the song and then that's that's the force that takes me to to grab something and start making putting a sound to it but when I say I was thinking the other day because when I say that I'm not I don't feel like a musician I don't like have this sound in my head that I you know they sort of come after I because I want to use the sound to express something but it's I don't you know, I'm not that type of musician that is like jamming all the time and, yeah. and you know, like, and, uh, and like, me neither. I'm not like that. <laughs> that's and why I can't. <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> yes. That's why when I introduce myself, I just say a lot of stuff. So like people, I, I think it's this, oh, I, I'm an artist. I'm an artist. What, what kind of art do I do? Sometimes I just write. Sometimes I just seeing sometimes I don't know yeah. you, because it's uh, more than that it's just creativity and the way it is materialized it can be in a, a lot of ways like yeah. you can just yeah, yeah, yeah. picture yeah. right so there's yeah. there's no there's no sorry there's no problem here on talking like if you don't feel like a musician it's fine <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, sometimes yeah. I don't feel like a musician but then yeah and then sometimes when I start like um playing with the instruments in my very you know <laughs> weird way um I can also get really into the sound and I for that for like five seconds I do feel like a musician in a way you know? <laughs> but then, yeah it's more yeah it's definitely a way of expressing 
yeah expressing not just expressing myself just expressing something you know yeah uh, yeah so you would say it's from the need well not the need but like you can do it like you can actually feel something and you know you can express it and why is that why do why do you express like through music or something else like what it is, is it your is. drive to 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 put it outside some some way it's yeah it's definitely a need and um but i mean i'm really obsessed with music i'm always listening to music it's really important i don't even, I don't even know what it, what it would i mean it's a lifesaver you know it's it's really it's really really important to me like sounds and also i started it's really interests me the fact that it's not a physical thing like you don't when I was doing clothes or paintings it was all these objects that I had to carry around with me and and now I, I just love to create something that doesn't really exist <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's, true. it's not a thing like okay yes you need a few instruments and stuff but it doesn't exist it's beautiful I love that yeah it's <laughs> material it's well it's not and it is it's it's kind of like magic for me yeah and also, <laughs> right? yeah, and also you, you you get it through your ears but even a deaf person can listen to music you know like there's deaf mm -hmm. people making music so it's it's even beyond it's like movements and you know the, the sound waves and yes it's vibration <laughs> yeah it's vibration it's amazing right yes cool. it's true <laughs> Ah, uh, let me see what do I have here for us to talk about because okay so in in this in in this sense of like the the feeling that we need to express right and as we've probably we we already had this kind of conversation the two of us <laughs> but it's like uh the idea of just um being able to create to express to like uh, it's like a purge right it's a way at least i think you have this the same way i do like we we'll, we process our life like our emotions and our even our experiences and we like record them <laughs> literally in songs <laughs> right so it's a way for us to process our experiences and our emotions and yeah there is this um idea that people who create art are very sensitive and they have like they they were just they just were born with a, a special sense of reality and they they just can um create naturally it's something that you were born with like your creative expression what do you think about that uh i i think everyone has it in the in them or should you know um it's just it's it's taken out of you many times and um um but i guess for some people it, you can just take it out of um but yeah it's it's not encouraged right as a yeah. kid i mean it depends on the environment you grew up in but I, I think like if it was it's it's a great release and i think everyone could be could make should make art or it could should have some sort of release that it's um that's just your brain your creativity that is um pushing it um mm -hmm. as a sort of therapy really yeah no, you know you don't need to be releasing things and showing but yeah but yeah but i guess wait what, what is the question exactly i'm <laughs> the, the question was more like this this idea because i feel like you have the same uh relationship to creative expression which we, is like processing life processing emotion yeah. processing experiences mm -hmm. um in this regard the question it was more like uh is it true that you have this like me and how do you do it like and how has been for you this discovery through music and sound and actually like through singing because you also have like and I witness your relationship with your own voice right mm -hmm. like your singing voice um mm -hmm. and how has it been for you to just do this process of your own life and your own experiences um yeah it's also really funny because it's not it, yeah, i'm definitely um expressing my my life my experiences but i feel like once you start 
in this mindset of always creating, you you're never really relaxing, even when you're watching a film or reading a book, because it's at some point it's like, oh, that's an idea, and you always have to write it down, and it's you're like you'll never rest again. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way, like I can't. I always have to have a notebook with me, or you know, because I, 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 like everything can be, or it's, you you just need to be present and somehow present and then something clicks and you're like you know you have to write it down and it's either you're going to write a song about it or it's going to be a part of a lyric or oh this is such a good word I just need to get it you know yeah it's really weird when you're in like driving or you're and you suddenly like hear something you have and you're like oh this is so good and then like okay I hope I memorize it because I can't write it down yes but it's like like, this filter right like you always you become being you like become this filter that anything can feed you yeah so so you you're <laughs> like yeah you're like a beacon of uh just mm-hmm. inspiration everything can inspire you and can yeah. give you more fuel to create yeah and yeah, yeah i guess the more connect i guess the more connected you are also i have times when I'm everything is so exciting and everything I feel so inspired but sometimes it can also happen the opposite and it's really weird to mm-hmm. not feel especially mm-hmm. if, you're, if it's a lower time in your life yeah. and you can also I can also write about, a lot about being sad but um yes there's there's various levels of sad and um mm-hmm. Some are productive, some aren't. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I had yeah. I had that question because I we've sometimes we touch this subject. So uh, that uh, that idea, right? That uh, artists are like melancholic, kind of outsiders of society, but at the same time, they're it's like that. Their, their sensitivity and their melancholy is exploited by society. Um, do you think that, because there is this, this, this feeling like only great geniuses that went through such hard stuff in their life, they, they're the ones who can create the most pure and beautiful pieces of art or music or whatever, you know? Uh, I mean, I, I don't like the word genius, I mean, yes. <laughs> like it has this patriarchal history behind it like these guys are geniuses that you know who's a women a woman genius it's like <laughs> oh but, but, but there <laughs> are you know or women like, geniuses and that, yeah. that were like also exploited by like the industry uh sure. and they they yeah because they were so different and melancholic and their life was like <clears throat> I, I cannot say the word <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say. their yeah. life were bad and and that was that their that uh toxic experience because there is this very um how do we say in English uh, there is this kind of adoration for misery oh, yeah yeah right I think and, yeah yeah um, but that, that's the thing about the levels of sadness. I think sadness is really good. I think sadness and suffering are really good for everyone, not just to make art. It's just something, you know, it's it's something you can use as an artist, but it's different from being depressed. I think depression, yes. that's, that's mental health, so it means you're ill, and that's different. I think you should really not be depressed <laughs> to make art you know like it's, it's you should you should heal heal you know but yeah. I think sadness and going through things and not and really delving into it and um you know facing it face to face and um and then if you're able to do it and not layer it with uh, many you know like and not cover it if you can, mm-hmm. yes. you can be something that you can um, use either during the time that you're sad or even just remembering it and then putting into into your work yeah but it's something that it's something I think it's something that you do naturally it's not oh I'm gonna you know it's sort of a necessity 
like it's I I feel like many times where I, I was really sad and to to think of new songs or to just draw something or write it was really helpful it was really really helpful I can also do it when I'm happy but it's it was it felt like something that was sort of saving me without wanting to yes. be super dramatic but yeah you know. <laughs> so there is this healing quality on just like um spending time with your sadness spending time with your pain actually right um i can relate to that uh, at least in my work uh, which I didn't thought about it when <laughs> when I was doing it, uh, I was just creating, but it was a little bit out of uh, this necessity of uh, expressing uh, my sadness. Mm -hmm. I didn't had any uh, any other way to do it, like to to process or to uh, understand. Um, because for me, when I started my my solo project, Sequin, uh, it was out of a breakup. So <laughs> those are the best. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it, it, yeah, it is like a way. But for me, I always like sang since I was a child. Mm -hmm. It was very natural to me to sing. Like I would go outside, like. I was five, my my neighbor would just watch me sing <laughs> from her farm because I li lived on a farm. Um, and I always sang as a child and, but I never, it was never conscious the way that music and singing or art, uh, in this case, I have more of this connection with music that saved me in a way that helped me to express to feel, to process. And I think more the word that we're looking for, I would say it, it is transmute feelings. So yeah. from sadness to some kind of like acceptance of something hard that you went through and then processing it and transforming it in something new, like a, a, a lesson in life, for example, like you learned something from that experience. Mm -hmm. right and for me it was this like singing and music was really it started to be a conscious way of doing this mm -hmm. of going through life and just um releasing stuff and like putting ends to cycles and stories of my life that I felt like um it were at the time too much to handle, right? So it is that 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 saying uh, in Portuguese, right? We have like quem canta seus mal espanta, which is like yeah. uh, the pe person or people who sing, they just just purge their their evil uh, things or bad things that happen to them. Like we just do it when we sing. Um, and yeah, let's let's talk a little bit more about the voice, right? Because it's a, this uh, idea of just like exploring with your own sound and listening to your own voice, like, right? How how do you feel about that? I did hear the other day. I think I told you that yeah. uh, you can't be completely. If you sing, you can never be totally depressed. Like it, if you're <laughs> someone that sings, it's almost physically impossible that you're super depressed like yes i mean if you sing every day and uh, i mean i noticed that if i go through a phase I, mean, I don't sing that much i don't sing as much as i should because every time i do i love it and i don't understand why i don't sing more it's just i never had that like i wasn't like you as a kid like singing away <laughs> yeah. no it, no it's, it's also really bad because i just always thought i i mean i, I don't i also don't think i'm like a great singer Singer, but uh, I think you can prep, you can use your voice. You can sing. I grew up thinking, oh, I don't sing well, so I won't sing ever. You know, like that idea. If you don't sing like an opera sing singer, since you're like two or three, then no, don't sing at all. Like, you know? <laughs> no, you know, it was it was that horrible idea of like, oh, you can't draw, don't go to art school. You can't yeah. draw like as in perfectly, don't go to art school. <laughs> you can't. You know, it was such a it's such a ridiculous. Because you know the best artists are not, or the best painters are not the ones that are 
have the best technique. It's all about um, concept and feeling and, and you know, and the same yeah. with singing for me it was a big no, no. And um, I, I actually, before, like, I guess almost 10 years ago, I, I had this boyfriend in London and we sort of, this was before I started my project. So before I was even still starting my, my own fashion brand, but he was a musician and uh, we did the, a, um, like a band as a joke. It was, we did it for like a month or two, but I, I had to say first time. And I remember being in my room, like really like, uh, like really shy, really shy. But I did sing, and the, I remember the first time that I sang, I couldn't really sing. It was like so, there was, it was, I was so shy. It was so horrible, like crippling. But I forced myself to sing, and I remember, whoa, I never felt so good. <laughs> like, I never felt um, this type of release, even though I'm barely releasing anything. But it was just so, wow. And then I only started my project like years later, but still, I remember that first feeling. And I mean, it's in our culture and it's bad that our culture sort of, you can only do it when you're good, when, you know, in other cultures, it's so normal to just sing and dance. And it's yeah. part of it. It's, it's, and I guess what the, the need to do it and why it feels so good, it's because all this energy that if something happens and we keep it inside and it just stays inside us and it becomes really toxic and, and, even if you speak to some friends, I mean, you can only speak until a certain amount. <laughs> then, yeah. then, like, yeah. they'll be telling you the same things or telling you to, you know, maybe you should yes. build it some other way. Yes, in a, in, a, in a profound way to, like, heal things, like heal experiences or traumas or whatever. We don't need even need to go to trauma. Just like yeah, experiences in life that are like confusing or hard or, you know, uh, in a profound way, like repeating the repetition, right? And this expression that because when we speak to others, we actually put a lot of filters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And when we sing, uh, it's much more connected to emotion. So, right. When you're like singing something you don't quite understand or a song that you're like, doesn't say anything to you, like the lyrics, it's like you're like a little bit emotionless. But when you do sing like uh, some song that you really feel like, oh, I love this, this a song that you just heard over and over again when you were like sad or in a period, like when we were like teenagers and we had that, those kind of songs that we would put and just on loop. Yeah, still have it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's true. absolutely. Do. And when you sing that, it's just like, it's, it's a, a doorway to your heart. It's actually a doorway to our uh emotional body mm -hmm. so that is something in like society um is actually cutting us off since like we're babies actually um right and and there there is a lot of like our our primordial sounds like our our how do we say um it's not automatic <laughs> that i want but you know, just that those those things like uh, when we talk in our in our sessions, like about the yawning, right? Be because people just yawn, like <gasps> right. And we always do this, like we put the hand on front of it, like it's a bad thing, but it's such a natural reflex way yeah. of our body to express, like to wake us up. And burping. <laughs> yes, exactly. Burping. Anything yeah. that it's a little bit more, uh, how do you say, wild and savage, we're like, no, 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 no. We're, we need to be like very... Uh, for a woman. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> it's true. And, and all of this cuts off our expression since childhood, right? Mm -hmm. I, some days ago, I'm just going to tell this story some days ago no some months ago but whatever I was with a friend in a, a, a garden and there was this um, children playing and they were screaming right and we were I was with this friend and we were having a very harsh conversation like life wasn't that easy at the time 
And I was telling him like, oh, do, don't you want to scream like, like these children? And he was like, yes, I would love to. But we felt that like this um, heaviness of being an adult and now you cannot just scream outside, you know? <laughs> If it is a child, the ch children were playing and they were just like, ah, and we were like, we want to do it, right? Because we wanted to free ourselves from a lot of like frustration we, we felt inside. And we we felt this, no, now we are adults. If we start screaming like this in the, the garden, like it's everybody's going to like what's going on with these people. Yeah. And, and those children, yeah, the, the, those children, especially you know, before you're like eight or nine and they haven't been brainwashed yet or they haven't been, yes. you know, <laughs> yeah. passed on. So, yeah. and it's also that phrase that says that to be happy later in life, you have to keep your childish enthusiasm and it's true. Yes, and it yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that there is yeah. this, this uh, uh, cultural thing uh, severing of our truest and most uh, authentic and wild and like yeah. expression like uh organic and just that's it so and and this notion that for 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 us to that was what you said like uh for us to sing we should like just just be born with the best voice ever you don't need to practice like you're just like amazing from birth <laughs> like right and and that's not it like even in um yeah there is this need to how do we say intellectualize also music right because before it was something that we would do like while working right even in our uh, portuguese culture we have a lot of traditional songs that come from uh working in the fields people yes. would just sing like people like uh, the how do we say oh my god no not like the... slashing how do we say the weavers yeah the weavers, yeah the weavers yeah. like they would have this uh, uh songs that they would sing while they were doing uh their work and uh simply with like our uh civilization and being more civilized it's we we start to lose this connection to our voice as a way to just be <laughs> yeah and I, about the child thing i just remembered something while you were talking about it um it was just before i it was when i was starting callus and um like I was writing the first demos, but I, I was, I had, I think I, at that time I was about to start recording, but hadn't, hadn't yet. And then um, I went to my parents' house and they were like, oh, we found this uh, VHS. Okay. Now I'm disclosing my age. This VHS um, <laughs> um, tapes, you know, from the nineties, from when you were a child and all of that. And uh, let's watch it. And we did. And there's this tape where I'm, I don't know I'm like six or seven and I'm singing and singing and I'm like just jumping and singing and I'm like I'm like who is this person I'm <laughs> her. Like, like she I was just shouting singing really well to be honest like <laughs> really really well this Brazilian song and <laughs> no like really like a proper show like it was like I think I don't think someone was actually I think they probably stopped it and just let me do it it was in I was in the, um, the forest as well and that was this Listen, I was just not shy at all, totally comfortable with my voice, dancing. And I was really shocked because I was starting this project where I couldn't sing. I was so embarrassed. I was so shy. I felt like my voice sucks. I can't do it. And I had been someone that could really do it. Oh, <laughs> so as a child, you're like me. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember. See, I don't even remember that. Like, I, I didn't yeah. know. This is really i think this i was starting like primary school so this was I probably couldn't even like six seven something like that and now and then like recently i've been also reading things that um tell you to so how important it is to connect to your child well you know depends depends but to think of that child and also think of your future self for example but yes now i'm thinking about that child the child before 
you know, before before I had my period, before before I was worried about, you know, before I cared about guys, before you know, before all of that, like when I was just completely free. Yes. And it's yeah, it's quite empowering to think that you are it depends on your childhood. Many times you were something that you don't even recognize anymore. I mean, I didn't know I was that person until I saw the tape. Yes. It, had, it was completely blocked for me. Like you see, yeah. Very, but that, but as a professional vocal coach, I I see that <laughs> a lot happening. Yeah, like okay. people just forget, and 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 actually, usually the blockages come through. Um, um while um uh, teenage years yeah because we have that that uh, we start to have that sense of the group and we want to belong and blah 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 um yeah. and that's when um there is this uh, crave for attention and then i had that like when when i because i i always felt like my voice wasn't that good like well I know I always knew I could sing well <laughs> but I wasn't like you know I always used this like I wasn't no Mariah Carey you know like no Beyonce uh singing uh I was okay <laughs> for me it's fine I like it has nothing to do with me like those kind of that kind of way of expressing through sound like I won't I don't like to do that like and I was always a very introvert child mm -hmm. so it was something very interesting when I released my project and I had some like teachers uh that they were like oh my god I didn't knew you could be like this on stage and I was like yeah you didn't get to know me like just because I was a chi shy child right or or teenager um there is this um yeah it's it's like life is so fast and people are just worried about so many things that we just don't take the time and the presence to observe each other right mm -hmm. and there is this um a lot of this happening um i i feel not now but in our in our generation it was a lot more in during um teenage and the adolescence uh, that we started to get the blockages on our voices uh also it's when our voice starts to to change uh, more into like uh, boys mm -hmm. but our our female voices also change during that okay. period okay. Yes, and, yeah, of and course. I don't. I don't have the same voice as I have. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, we we change our our child voice starts to change to a more deep and profound voice in some cases, not all. Um, and yes, it's it's uh, also a lot of other blockages in life start during uh, adolescence, right? Um, but it's very interesting to then regain this consciousness of your freedom of expression before your programming, before your right into society, into to what you're supposed to be saying, doing, and behaving like, right? And mm -hmm. and it's very interesting to regain that consciousness that before you were actually a free wild child that could just express herself freely with no like fear of judgment because that's the main thing I think um do you feel um that is something that still impacts you like um um in your expression like maybe more like the judgment part like if you're like a good singer or a good musician or if your music is good or bad or whatever how do you feel about it um i also wanted to ask i will <laughs> answer that but um if you feel a big difference between who you are who you are in your daily life and the person you are on stage for example so I still I still feel myself as a really shy person, like the whole like introverted, extrovert and all of that. I can still be like super shy, but then I already arrived at a stage on stage <laughs> where I can <laughs> where I can where I can like just you know 
I remember like my mom was like, oh, but you were so shy. I can't believe you've done that. Like, um, but it's, I can, I, there's still, um, I can still feel a bit, I can on stage, I'm not shy. I think I still am shy. But some people told me like, you don't seem shy at all. I was like, oh, okay. So there's <laughs> still, it's a bit different. I'm still a different person in real life, but um, I definitely started to realize where that shyness come from. And it's, mm. it's not, it's not very good. <laughs> it's not <laughs> what makes you shy. You know, like it's, I thought, I thought it was a, it, well, mm, it's weird because when you're growing up, sometimes you're, they sort of bully you a lot of like teachers for being shy, like, you know, speak up, don't be shy. Yeah. And then like, yeah. that's the worst thing you can tell a child that's introvert because I would even get more shy. Like, yes, yes. I would panic, you know? So, but then I also, I've seen that I could be really shy, but then I could also in some situations when I'm comfortable I'm someone that doesn't shut up and like or and some people are like oh no you're not shy at all you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it depends sure. and I, um, yeah I think I have many it depends on the situation I'm just different people yes of course yeah I have I, I totally relate to what you're speaking about like um I was always as a young person <laughs> very into like I, I was doing theater in school you know I would just like then I had like bands and I would just give concerts and but during as a student for example I was very very uh shy uh, like yeah. and I would have like teachers I I was looking back I was very lucky honestly I had very good teachers <laughs> they were very I, I was actually also like in my high school years uh it was very good because I had very small class like we were just seven so it was amazing yeah I, I know not all of people <laughs> have that like because we like had a lot of attention normal. tell me I think I think it was like 20 something of 30 normal yes normal, yes like, exactly 20 well in my school it would be like 30 people in the same class yeah. and in mine it was like seven so it was very very good like I was very lucky in those years to like we had so much attention and like I, I could really learn you know not just like memorize things and we would have time to ask and to question things and have that attention from teachers which usually people don't get but uh, and those teachers they they knew me they knew me but before like I had some people that were like what the hell where this came from like how can you be like this like this on stage I've never seen anything like it and I was like well there if you get to know me like there is a part of me that was always like this right yeah but there there are the conditions for that to happen when when I well I I started in music like getting concerts and gigs and whatever with my rock band Polish the Bali's band oh, yeah, was, I've seen it. yes I've so, which was very cool because it was more like I had to be like more more show off kind of and I was really like I, it impacted my voice a lot like it was pretty bad some concerts because I couldn't do it like it was a lot of energy like I had to sing and scream and be there and just like yeah um and it was very hard for me when I when I started like my solo project sea queen i had this thing from like the media <laughs> media attention that they started to say like oh sea queen the alter ego of Anna Miro. and i was like what's alter oh, ego okay. it's just me <laughs> like <laughs> what is this <laughs> You know, I just don't want it to call myself Ana Miró. Like, I wanted, like, an artistic name, which Ana Miró is still an artistic name, but whatever. Uh, but this idea that you go on stage and you're something else, you know? And it's like, yeah. why? Why is that? 
we need to be something else that I feel like for myself, I would like, this is my uh, goal as, uh, as me, I don't know, <laughs> as me, as an artist is like, I would like to always be me. And because in life, in my life, I decided to just discover myself. Who am I? What am I doing here, <laughs> right? And how to just be free, just be free to to feel what I feel, to to think what I think, to be. And when when I go on stage, I don't like to have that mask or persona. I'm just I just wanted to be wild. I don't want to. Think think I don't want to you know I want to do a good job but actually the, the main purpose is for me to have fun so if, but then you feel like the exact same person because I still exactly. feel I, I'm not sure I do I, I don't know I, I in a way yes for sure but also I I still I don't know I'm still figuring it out but I started <laughs> sort of a bit more recently than you but um way more recently but um I still, I don't know. I don't know if it's the exact same person. I think it's part of us. Because, yeah. I, don't, I don't know, because in life, I'm not the same person when I'm, uh, we're, we're so many people inside one body, yeah, exactly. you yeah, know, yeah. and that's it. When you're on stage, you, you're aware that you're on stage, right? Yeah. It's so, yeah, so you're, you're, how do you say uh, your? Um... I feel like time passes Stage, in a different way. Tell me, tell me, what? Time what? when um, I mean, I still I'm I still haven't done like the shows I really want to do, you know. Mm. But um, I still to. feel like whenever you're on stage, um, time passes in a different way. So it's sort of like a different reality. Yeah. And I remember, for example, like a year or two ago, you know, when it was like the whole COVID thing and I was really not going through a really good time and I was feeling nervous in my daily life. I remember like having a German class and feeling nervous to go to being on a, I was in Berlin and I was in the S-Band to go to German class and I was feeling super nervous for that, for German class. Um, you know, just to be with people in the mask and all that. But then I, I had a show that week and I was not nervous at all. You know, so it was like, for I could I I knew I, I was feeling weird, but I knew that okay, if I if I'm booked for shows, I will be there and I'll do it and I can do it and it'll be good. But things like you know, take the subway, go to a class, talk to people that are not my friends, like that was freaking me out. Yeah. But the other thing, it was okay. Yeah. So I don't know. It's but I think it's, it's very yeah. interesting because I had like the opposite experience during that time it was like before like 2019 the gigs that I gave uh -huh. I felt so bad uh, <laughs> I was just so confused like why am I doing this like what am I doing because usually I would just play and be so happy and feel so good and it started happening like I would finish a gig and I would feel like devastated yeah. devastated was, oh. yeah really like what, what was I doing this is so strange like who am I like you know I've, I've completely lost like a connection to what I what what I was doing on stage this, that was your there was like your inner voice telling you something right like yes you know, and then it was funny. You. what was yeah. it telling you yeah it was funny because uh, the last gig I gave, gave in was in 2020 it was like after valentine's day <laughs> and oh. it was uh already like the the covid stuff was being talked around uh, but actually, I I had like a a gig. People, I think it were like twenty five people in a space for three hundred. It was something like this, you know those those kind of 
gigs that you're yeah. like well oh, it yeah. wasn't as much people as you expect well I didn't expect to be have 300 people but yeah. <laughs> not 20 you know not and, yeah. Yeah, it was like very strange and and I, I enjoyed it I actually enjoyed that uh, concert to to give that concert but it, but the the feeling with myself like with me like I knew it was a great gig we played perfectly we had fun blah 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 but with me like my my way of feeling that was like off so I just had like a conversation with my manager <laughs> just telling him like look I need to stop because I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> and he was yeah. very nice and sweet as he always is and he was like okay I understand completely and we just started to closing my um my well we wouldn't book anything else well then the COVID started anyway yeah and it that thing started <laughs> and I was like oh my god yes perfect <laughs> okay, so like universe I only asked for me not everyone yes yes it's true it's true but for <laughs> like, me it was wow. like oh amazing that that's what I actually need what? like I, I really needed to stop yeah. and and I had this opposite thing like I during that period like music started like it went like back there for mm -hmm. later you know and I just started to do stuff for myself and I actually had this this connection from the world because everyone was like scared of <laughs> what was going on and I was just like oh now I wanted to live you know something else I'd rather like not just music because I was very into it uh before right it was my main uh job right yeah uh, so I had the uh, opposite experience because I was feeling uncomfortable on stage. I was okay. feeling like I've I've never I don't think I've ever felt nervous. Well, and you were playing with a band, right? You, so yes. I think it's because I never played with a band. I always played alone. So I've, there's um, in mm -hmm. a way you have to do bigger dynamics. Maybe you know I always have to deal with just me yeah so but far. i um, honestly because i've done it was not a band right no it I wasn't used, a band it wasn't bad. at all because i played before when i started i was playing alone right i just yeah. started having a band because well the main reason firstly was because i was tired of walking around and playing alone i wanted company yeah, yeah. you know i was m more fun to do it like that um and I also wanted to explore more my singing skills instead of just controlling all the machines and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, so in that case was good. But that feeling of not being comfortable, I was really like disconnected from what I was doing. Like I lost trace of my main purpose mm -hmm. on music. So it wasn't nothing to do with the band, you know, like they were amazing. Poor guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love this did you, too. <laughs> but did you but, find it? Did you find it again? Are you back on? No, track? no. no. <laughs> I gave I gave two gigs this year all by myself. I didn't enjoy them. Like it was good. Uh, to get back on stage, uh, but I I felt it was good to just see what I want to do next. You know, yeah, it's good to just mm, let's just see. But no, I, 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 I still haven't found that safe space on sp on stage, which I felt before. I felt free. I felt safe, uh, even when like the venues were strange. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the no, stage yeah. was a very like common space to be at. And I don't feel like it's somebody else. I feel it's me. But yeah, I feel it's like a part of me. It's not me, yeah. me. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> 
interesting. But you've been playing, right? And a lot. Not really, no, no, not really, not at all. No, um, no I mean, I, I, I had, no, no, no. More than me, no. at least. <laughs> well, no, not a, like, um, I mean, I had very few shows this year. It was really bad. Um, but I mean, not, I mean, I was doing a lot of other things um and now also i don't um didn't have any manager or anything like to book my shows mm -hmm. and i was moving places and working on music as well but uh, uh so i didn't really book show i played uh in july now i'm gonna play in a week or so but um yeah no this year was not really hopefully next year hopefully next year but uh what i feel about what I like about a show as well, the preparation of it, um, and and uh, when I prepare well, it's sort of it's it's a nice time. Like you know, you have this goal, and you if I, many times I don't do it well, but if I want to do it really well, I can do it like as if I'm an athlete. You know, like you know, no drinking and like just water and you know sleeping more and focusing on the singing. And, you know, it's just sort of it's nice. And it's nice. That, I mean, I should probably want to do, be doing that for myself without having a show but <laughs> uh, <laughs> I shouldn't sure. want to like eat well but, you know, but I know when, if I have a show I have a bigger responsibility and I have to you know um so I like that that it's good for me it's it gives me it's good it's good it's um gives me health mental health and physical health so I like that and um and I feel I only felt really good in like two or three shows in my life, like amazing, like I, the connection and all. Um, but even the ones that weren't so good, it's still, I like that space. I like that if you're doing it well, you're only thinking about it, you're not thinking about other things. I've been in a situation where I was like, my mind is somewhere else, this is not going well. <laughs> but but if, you, if you're doing it well, it can be, it's a really cool thing to do. Yes, it is. You Don't do it for a living. It's like the best job. <laughs> yes, it is. Do you do you feel like the the good ones were the ones where you were most present? Oh yeah, and also, but it's I I think you feel the energy of the crowds, right? So having a good crowd is so good. <laughs> yeah, so it's true. If you have, I think it's the, I think it's the crowd. I think it's the crowd. I mean, you can still give a good show with a weird crowd, or that's what you. What I'm trying to do is no matter what, try to do my best. But if you have a good crowd, it's amazing how you feel it in your body. And I, I don't know. Like I listen many times. I listen to Marina Abramovich, the artist, and she's always for her the performance. She never rehearses or anything because for her the performance. Obviously, she's not a singer, but. For her, the performance and performance itself is something that is only complete with the crowd. So for her, it makes no sense to rehearse because there's no crowd. And um, and I'm starting to think that with mm. music, it's sort of probably the same. Hmm. That uh, the crowd can really complete you or something. Yes. I mean, many revolutionary shows were pretty empty sometimes <laughs> and you know it's true for, for me as as my connection to music performance whatever is more like has a more spiritual meaning to it okay um I feel it doesn't really matter <laughs> if you have a crowd or not uh, sometimes I do as 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 when I was a child, you know, I just do performances for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel they help me a lot to connect more to my expression, like my voice and also my body, because that's what you're saying. Like you feel in the body. Mm -hmm. Right. When I, it's more like it's really an energetic thing because when I'm, I never see the crowd. I never, see, even when I see them, I don't see them. Exactly. You know, I don't even hear anything. You know, it's like so. It's not that I'm like, oh, they're looking, they're laughing, they're clapping. They're no, no, no. It's just the feeling. Yes. Because I've been in situations where there was there was actually people, but 
I felt weird. And I wonder if this was me or if this was the, the situation or maybe it was the energy of the crowd. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I honestly have no certainty in anything. So I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. Maybe it was <laughs> everything out. at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I had like, con like concerts where I was there and I was just feeling the vibe of the crowd and it wasn't that good. And I just like this was something that I worked on myself was to just be be present with me so I would do it like for firstly mainly for me uh so I could be like uh there I would do a good performance vocally speaking like I don't know playing good uh and just like expressing what I was there to express in a good way despite people looking or caring or not mm -hmm. um and this was like my main workshop like in in singing live because uh well I don't know I just it it interested me to be able to perform despite the circumstances you know Yeah. there were five people or 300 whatever mm -hmm. uh if they were interested or not if the sound was good or not etc oh yeah well the sound yes yes the sound yes. Is very yeah, yeah. i'm so used to not having good sound that when i have good sound it's like a dream actually well, this sound is the most important thing <laughs> when you, it is, yeah, it is like, very important and that's the thing yeah. like you go and you tell me You have to still be able to do it. I mean, yes, I've, I've dealt with like really precarious situations, and yeah, it's still did it. You have to really wow. But that's why, like, when you have good sound, it's it's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> but sometimes you have a good sound, and like around, like the vibe is just weird, and it's it depends a lot. It depends a lot. I had like the best concerts in precarious situations like terrible sound but i i would just go and have like i would do a gig with five songs and yeah. i had more and then people were so like wow just repeat all of them and i would do the set two times <laughs> no that's true that's true yeah. Yeah. no so, i remember yeah i remember one show i did and it was 2020 and it was you know just like the first week where we were allowed to have shows like outside. I never played outside and I did. And I love, I don't even, I don't think the sound was good at all. Um, but it's so amazing because it was so full and everyone was so, you know, everyone was so thirsty for anything. <laughs> so it wasn't even that my music was so good. It was just more like, <laughs> I could, it was so cool. It was so nice. Like, I love that show. It was, and I think that was energy. I think in that yes. situation, it's totally energy. Yeah. And also my energy. I was really happy to be doing it. Yes. And I that's what I've learned throughout these years. It's like if you feel good, inevitably you start to like just spread your energy. Like and people yeah. just like shut up and look at you and wow. <laughs> and it's true. And you can, as as a yeah. as a a music uh gigs consumer when i go i i like to feel that the musicians or whoever, anybody who is performing is having fun like yeah. when i feel like that oh my god so beautiful they can just play like rubbish stuff <laughs> like for me like it doesn't really matter it's just actually that's one of the things that helped me a lot when you start to work In my case, of course, that I work with um, art as a therapy, right? Mm -hmm. In my holistic vocal coaching, uh, yeah. we use music uh, or other things, right? We we also write, we also draw, we use a creative expression in all ways to just um, heal ourselves and know, get to know ourselves, right? So that's one of the things that made me realize that we are all creator, <laughs> creator beings. We don't need to be like uh, amazingly uh, skillful in anything. Uh, and, and that's the thing that opened my eyes 
also to receive any kind of music genre, actually like art in general. Like I can see now when, mm -hmm. where, where was that person? Even if aesthetically, aesthetically, how do we say? Um, Aesthetically. <clears throat> <laughs> like the like how it looks like how yeah like how it looks how it sounds for me doesn't really matter there is some kind of level of authenticity identity yeah absolutely um that's that's it if it's authentic and that person was in a specific space i don't know how to yeah. describe it but it's like i i can see value in every everything I have something to say about that. I'm just realizing because it's getting nightfall. Yes. Nightfall. It's getting halfway. super dark. I don't know. So should I, I'm going to just try to put a light on. Yes, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, we want to see your beautiful face. <laughs> Is it better? Not really. Wait. No, just, not, not really. Okay. I'm going to do something. Okay. Yeah. Do you have like a lamp? Yes. <laughs> we will wait for you. Should be better now, right? Let's see. Try it. Okay, we have a visit. Yeah. Yes, it's much oh, better. Okay. okay. It's a bit now better. you can see your face. <laughs> um, no, so about that, I um, yeah. I mean, I don't want to be saying bad things about a band, but I'm not going to say who they are because yesterday I saw a show. Well, I saw a show yesterday and I was really, um, it was these kids and the, um, they were technically amazing, like amazing, but they were, New Order, Joy Division. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, it couldn't, like, the exact copy. Exact copy, like, exact copy. And they were perfect. And I was just thinking, wow, I mean, I wish they were more lo-fi. Because if they were more lo-fi, I okay, because, I mean, there's so many bands that are, you know, clearly influenced by, I mean, even I see, I don't, I still haven't done the music that I want to make, you know, like, the, the, yes. the find, you know, the gimmick or the, your thing but I'm searching and uh, but what I felt last night was oh my god like uh it didn't it I didn't feel anything you know I didn't feel anything because it was first it was a copy but then even in the copy it was so perfect that there wasn't because <laughs> it could be a, a influenced completely a copy but then you could they could give their identity like their their something rough or something or or even more perfect you know but not the exact yes. thing yes I, so I felt like yeah so the thing that you were saying that it doesn't need to you can see you can like all types of music and um, as long as you see something like yes sort of yes there is um, that spark I I would call it like a spark of authenticity yeah <laughs> Well, it's just kind of yeah. cool because I've been having this idea or revelation that there isn't, but but this comes, of course, from my belief that music is sacred, <laughs> like yeah, art yeah. is sacred, yeah. because there is no authorship in some level. There is nothing new to be done, you know, like uh, we're just like- I don't believe in that. Recycling. <laughs> same it's it's like it, it's all in in a level it's always new like if i do one thing yeah, yeah. like if i'm inspired like we can watch the same tv show and do mm -hmm. like this uh, uh i'm sorry i don't want people to <laughs> like us ass i'm gonna <laughs> let him go okay no. goodbye um but it's like you can have the same inspiration right and do something completely different from me. Like we can do like, okay, let's watch this episode of this series and be inspired. And then you do a song and I do a song. And it's like, 
we're going to have the same source of inspiration. That's what I'm I'm meaning. Like there is no authorship in that kind of sense because we, we cannot patent inspiration. That's that's what I'm saying, you know. But in regards, I, I can totally feel that. That's why I'm saying sometimes I, I like things that are more raw um then when it's technically perfect and people are just wow just playing like wow what a technique that's why I'm always with that uh in my work right it's very important that we do technique <laughs> but it's not all yeah. because yeah you still have to carry some emotion some energy some novelty some you know like what in your yeah. It's good that you said that. Imagine we could make something with the exact same inspiration, but then if we're honest and if we're, I'm, I'm still working on that. I realized that in many situations I wasn't so in touch with me, you, and that, and then that, then the work was shit, you know, because I was just <laughs> not being entirely myself. And um, but you know, the world is sort of made in the way to tell you that everything has been done, you know, like. And he always hated that. I always hated that because <laughs> you yourself, there's literally just you, like with your DNA, with your, yes. your you're just happening right now, only one time. Like, you know, it's just like this. So if you're, you have something that no one else has, everyone does. Of course. So, so um, if you use it well, and that's the thing, I'm still learning how to do it and uh, thinking about it and not, thinking oh no you know I'm just one and just one more and I am I am mm -hmm. at the end of the day I am but mm -hmm. there's still some I think I believe that there's power in all of them all of us and then yes everyone has yes. some sort of power and we're but you know that's it many people will tell you that you don't but then yeah. you, you have to find it yes yes that's exactly it. that's that's um I feel the same way like of course I do like for me and that that's what I want to like express and share to the world just please like because people are like how do you do it like la, la, la. and I was like I just did it like I just do it and you can do it too <laughs> it's like it's not that I'm special I am <laughs> that's yeah. it. Like, the paradox of of this is like we're all unique and that's what I'm always saying to people that don't sing, uh -huh. like that the, the, they don't have those perfect mainstreamy voices, right? Yeah. It's like, I always give the same, um, I know it's very cliche, um, um, oh my God example but i i always say like have you ever listened to tom 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 waits Wait. <laughs> i'll tell me or tom waits and people are like no and i was like he has a strange voice and he still did it in his like no not everyone uh, knows him. Bob Dylan. i mean i love yes, Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. i don't know we have so many um so so many weird voices making it you know and that's the thing if you're if you want to do something express yourself in some way or do some art i don't know you need to do you because yeah. otherwise like it's going to be just like dissonant you know yeah and also yeah and also that idea of having a great voice i think in yeah. last year i was reading the biography of that opera singer renee i can't remember her surname but the, the book is called the inner voice and i think mm -hmm. it was there that I, I read this how she would <laughs> hate to sometimes people would go to her and like oh my god you're so lucky to have that amazing gift of that voice and then she would get really angry because she was like i practice like six hours a day like <laughs> and she was like yes i was born with something but it's not like they like look at her like she's this really lucky person um oh and she's like i practice so much you know like she does so many things she's and then like you're so lucky to have yeah. that gift. yeah <laughs> yeah that's but, that's why i feel if i feel a way for for like try this other lens but i'm listening 
<laughs> it's like people, how do we say? Oh my God, I'm going to use Google Translate. Wait. <laughs> because there is this expression and I want it. This doesn't, okay. It's like, no, I cannot do it. It's not the same thing. Okay. Um, okay, we can start. And maybe I found some lights. Okay, sorry, I should say. <laughs> it's like it's evening here already. So. Um, yeah, there is this idea that uh, art and artistic expression, it's just for some, like success is just for some. Mm -hmm. And it's just, yeah, it's true. Maybe we cannot all be uh, successful artists mm -hmm. in the way that we're going to be famous or something. Uh, but um, in regards to voice, in regards to anything, you, you need to practice. You need yeah. to, to spend time. Like you're, you're, you're not good at something just because you were born good at something. Maybe you have a natural inclination to be good at something. <laughs> yeah, like, uh... There is a lot of work involved in it. Um, and yes, it's the same thing. It's like, and don't expect your voice to sound like anybody else's voice because your voice is inside your own body, which is unique. <laughs> and yeah. it's not going to sound. And actually it's that. Why do you want to sound like anybody else? Why won't you like to have a unique sound that like people would listen to you? It's like, oh my God, this is that voice, you know, like so yeah. beautiful when that happens. Um, and it's so nice when something isn't pretty, you know, <laughs> I'm sometimes so sick of like prettiness. And, yes. The, the, but, uh, I, yeah. but then, and there's that thing that I believe that, you know, that's, phrase as well that hard work can beat talent if talent doesn't work hard you know <laughs> I firmly believe in that like um, yes. um but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm a firmly believer of that and for, for me as an artist I was always uh like 50-50 I would just rely on my talents and my <laughs> natural ability to be comfortable uh, on stage, for example, and 50-50 on my um, working, my voice and my, um, uh, yeah, abilities, you know? Yeah. Um, maybe if I could go back, I would practice more actually now you can you can practice now and go forward <laughs> yes it's true but but i i feel it also helped me as a professional um teacher let's say or guide to uh -huh. understand that um it's not it's not all like academic view of something it's not all you know, and you, you actually learn a lot through experience and through mistakes. Oh, yeah, and through just it. experimenting and yeah. Uh, yeah. So those detours are also, very- it's not really the mistake is really how you deal with the mistake, right? Like with how, mm -hmm. it's how you get back on track after falling. Yes, right? so yes, of course. Mistakes are really important. Um, yeah. Yes, it's like I like I like a phrase from a guy that I follow on YouTube. Nothing really. <laughs> his page, I think, it's called also didactic, and the guy always says that there are no mistakes; there are only mistakes. Like you miss a take, <laughs> you know, okay. and you yeah. just can do it again. Let's do it again, yeah. like next take, like take one, take two, take three. And I like that predisposition of like in life and in in music also. Like, um, because there, I don't know for you, 
this is another question. <clears throat> this this balance between the having a, a good technical like sound production or whatever and um having the authenticity you know for me to, I, I had that issue like people would say like oh but this doesn't sound good and blah 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 and I would take uh like the professionals because I'm not a music producer right yeah. I'm like I don't know <laughs> I just make songs and then I like to work with people but I had this experience of like just it needs to be good in a technical way um mm -hmm. I don't know if you if you had that experience and what is for you enough is enough you know to to like finish a project and is it good or not how how do you deal with that um I also work with producers and that's why and it's normally just one producer and this mm -hmm. is why this relationship just needs to be really good yeah um, I've had some that were better than others and the ones that were really good were always the ones that they knew where the identity was so so because um they knew what to touch what not to touch what to keep and not to keep but then this is why it's really good if you know how to produce yourself i don't i'm not sure uh because i do everything alone i do like at the moment of the final thing i like to do it with someone so far not saying that i, I won't produce mm -hmm. ever but it's good. <laughs> otherwise it's just just me and me and i need some feedback and to it's it's also interesting when you make a demo and then you show it to someone and someone listens to something else on top of it that you haven't thought about it i love it it's just become comes to life or something and um but yeah that's why that, that relationship needs to be it's really a special relationship that you need to have like with you know it's need it needs to tackle really the yeah, yeah. it's <clears throat> sometimes it, it just you you can redo a beat and still keep yourself even if it's a whole new beat but then you need that technical person needs to be someone that knows where in that beat <clears throat> is your identity or yes yeah okay okay it's tricky yeah. but it, because i've seen it's uh it's it's a tricky it's tricky so it's, it's it's difficult to find that person yes it is <laughs> yeah. but it's also a good like i like that because you have the same thing as i do we do basically everything alone <laughs> yeah so in the end it's a very uh solitary path i don't like to say lonely because it's not lonely it's like more solitary like solitude um and then there is this other part of like yeah that you like to have some input that you like to have some other energy entering your energy to yeah. to make it like what happens in a band but i never yes. had a band exactly range of ideas yes um, yes so when you work alone and then you have to like get somebody to put your ideas together sonically it's very I had, interesting i had this it's not really an aha moment but it was this mo not really aha moment it was more like a oh my god moment <laughs> <laughs> you know when you like you work in a demo in your bedroom and it's something really personal yeah and i remember one once or twice and especially if i was in a studio that was a bit bigger or something and and then i see this song come to life and there's someone else there and then it, and then i start thinking of the bedroom and i get so emotional if it's going well if it's yeah. going well <laughs> you know? yes. and it's oh my god so I, it's i it's so like orgasmic <laughs> yeah. oh, it's so good <laughs> it's so nice i love it it is it's like i i, I know totally what you're talking about and it's <laughs> for me it's like 
the dreaming <laughs> is coming true, you know, and it sounds better than I could ever imagine. And it's just like, oh, oh my God, I just oh. want to cry. Yeah. It's really yeah. It also can go terribly wrong if it's going the other way. Yeah, it's, it's true. <laughs> it's true. But it's such a fun way to, like, I don't know, it's just the fun thing in life when you experience that because it's something private right each thing mm -hmm. that you create each song that you write or you compose or whatever for me it's like I, I, I'm not yet a mother of children but <laughs> I feel like my songs are my children and that, yeah, yeah. that's there that's the first stage when I start to work on a song with somebody that I start to feel it becoming more materialized mm -hmm. uh, and that okay it's it's leaving the nest you know it's leaving yeah, yeah, the nest yeah, yeah. oh my god and then when you release it how do you do that like how do you feel when you release something I feel released <laughs> <laughs> no it's true yeah <laughs> yes yeah <clears throat> because for me like the days like the day when I release like a single or something it's a terrible day. Terrible? Yes. I'm like so like anxious. I, I cannot. Like I, I, I have to. I like to just shut off like social media and my phone. You know, it's like, like I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to know what people are saying or like what if they're liking it or not it's, it's and I feel that I feel like I release my baby to the world and to the to the world you know it's, it's like ah. and it's terrible for me yeah. that's why I'm asking what do you feel no in the beginning I thought it was something really important but now I'm like whatever <laughs> <laughs> like it's really good I mean, I mean, good I feel good and it's like I post about it you know I still I still haven't gone into the stages that I want to get to anyway you know um I feel like it's just another small step towards something that I want to get to okay so and where do you want to get to oh well you know <laughs> there's no limit there's no limit oh um, you keep saying it right where where the I haven't reach the place that I want to get to I haven't like you've been saying that oh Do yeah but know? it's true yeah yeah but uh, well well I don't think I ever will <clears throat> um, I think I always want to keep going so it's in a way I'll never get because I, I if all goes well I guess I would like to carry on doing it so it's in a way it's you know but um but I'm still because I started almost like five years ago now but I put I never did anything in music. So the first song I released was the first song I ever made in my life. Like I didn't even know where, you know, the C key on the keyboard was. So it's, yes. in a way I'm still, you know, you know, like a lot of musicians were, had like teenager bands and they did yeah. stuff. I feel like now I've been through the first five years of the first exploration and now I'm more, now I'm starting really. So I was still going through that even though I was releasing the songs and doing all those things, I was, it was a very first experience. People didn't know, but it was a very first time of everything, everything at all. I, even the, my first show, I, never, I was never ever on stage ever for anything. So this is what I mean by I'm more, I'm more aware of what I'm doing. And, um, but I also want to keep, this uh, mindset of always being always on the go or developing developing so I don't think I'll ever be like oh yeah wait I arrived you know I'm yeah here. yeah <laughs> I don't think I'll ever say that I mean maybe I will who knows but I don't think so yes. if I keep keep being the way that I am there is no destination it's just the path that yeah it's right like the 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 journey mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm exploring just the uh, surroundings <laughs> and yeah and also that yeah. idea of like change or <clears throat> want to change something or achieve something and it can be very over overwhelming but then you, you think of you know trees the trees start from 
the bottom and not from the top. So it's like you have to really go one day at a time. And I believe that I think maybe if you work on it every day, you then you'll start getting closer to. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. It's a very good, <laughs> a good analogy with a tree. It's yeah. True. I love trees. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So would you say, really say tell me? I mean, they can, you can really learn well from nature in general, but trees are so, yes. so calm and so grounded. Yeah. I love trees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> So you would say like uh, your your relationship to music and to art in general, it's like your relationship to life, right? Like your yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it just mirrors it. Yeah, yeah. That's also a big conversation. Mm -hmm. The whole like art life. I, I, yeah, it's all very mixed, really, um, and. Yeah, it's also a practice. Um, I I felt a bit disconnected and I was reading a lot, writing a lot and thinking a lot, but I wasn't really um, making my demo really. So I'm now showing up to my work, even when I don't really feel like it, but I'm creating the habit of showing up, which I had in the past. And then suddenly mm -hmm. this year sort of lost it a little bit. And now I'm back to it and it's, yeah, we sort of need to show up. But it's the thing, it's that thing of the child, right? Like if you have, and I never yes. had a child, but you have it. And then if you don't take care of it, it's just, a, you know, but then, you know, like, so I'm like, okay, so if this is my child, I can't just neglect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> you know, like, it's, I, I bet moms, like sometimes, and fathers hopefully don't want to pick don't want to like leave on a rainy day to pick up your child from whatever training or, and then they like go they don't like leave it there yeah. because yeah, they don't yeah, feel yeah, like it true. so i'm like okay so if this is my child i even if i don't feel like and then when i go on the, like a drum machine or something i'm like oh my god i love this yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then maybe true. that was like so lazy and i didn't really want to do anything but i'm like showing up as in i will do it every day a little bit even if it's just half an hour Mm -hmm. just working on a beat mm -hmm. and it changes but I'm again like you know I'm learning with my own mistakes yes absolutely like I'm falling <laughs> and I'm getting up and that's yeah and so it's not like I'm not like super wise and <laughs> not at all not at all no. yeah. okay so is there anything else that you would like to share like any insight, any message that has been coming to you from, I don't know, the universe, your life experience, whatever? Um, I think it's more communication. I, I feel like we should all communicate more, you know, like uh, with anyone, like family, friends, through your work. I, don't, I was always someone that kept a lot to myself and I saw how bad that can be. So I think like sharing, even if it's, especially if you're going through something, but even if you're not, because some, you know, just more, more talking, I guess, you know? Yes. But yes. Good. I want mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there, there, there is something that I feel more and more people are realizing uh, that um our community <laughs> <Like because laughs> Sorry, so so much. <laughs> see also like the child like not afraid to yawn yeah <laughs> yes. i i i'm i'm actually pretty happy last month that more and more people that i connect with friends family um people that come to work with me uh or just colleagues artists whatever mm -hmm. are are getting more conscious about their communication skills I... are getting more conscious of their empathic skills actually like I, and i and i feel that firstly you need to feel that towards yourself right mm -hmm. you have that time and space to uh, care for you to be with yourself to listen to yourself because sometimes our inner voice is speaking right to us and we don't 
we don't take the time and I think that was something in the last two years we all well not all <laughs> but a lot of people started to learn to oh, yeah. myself included yeah I feel, I feel like the shittiest times in my life were the ones where I was ignoring my inner voice and my inner voice was shouting like shouting mm -hmm. and then you know, even like getting sick because of that you know like your body really telling you something and you know but you're you're just so conscious in your rational and your mind and then everyone has an inner voice you need to really listen to it and it's normally it's always right it's yes always right. yeah it's always it's right true. <laughs> but, but it it's hard it's hard to to work on that listening you know because there is something there is there is this fear of being silent like a lot of people don't like silence they're just they're not used to it because we have mm -hmm. such, like a culture of noise <laughs> like, yeah. Right, yeah, we're yeah, always yeah. listening. Like you go for a coffee, and the places have like music, and then you're shouting to speak to your yeah. friends, and then it's traffic, and then it's right there. There is this. Uh, more and more people are um, looking for silence, looking for nature, looking for listening, because the only way you can start to listen is when you turn down the volume. And it can be scary at first. When you first do it, it is super scary. I've had a few moments where it was the turning point where, and it was super scary. But once you pass it, you'll never feel it again unless you get to really disconnect with it and go back to it. But it's you, many people and I myself have done it, uh, avoid it, avoid the silence. And, and then when you, when you have no choice but to deal with it, it's really scary. But the, the good news is that once you pass it, it's okay. Yes. You just have to go through that bad moment, but then it passes. It's yeah. a flux. I don't it's feel flux. it's, it's a bad stayed. moment. Would you say like I think the perspective it's it's something it's so difficult. Unknown. Difficult. Yeah, it can be difficult. It can be it, it can, can be it can have a lot of but it can be scary. And yeah. It can be scary and you can have like a lot of anguish. But it, it and I think mostly it can be quite scary. Yeah, but I feel it's just scary because it's such uh, uh, it's it's an unknown thing. As we do, but then it's powerful. Then it's yes. powerful, and then yes, you, it's you true. deal with everything. Then once you're able to be alone, you can be with anyone, yes. or in any situation. Yes, but, but I, 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 I feel that I feel that that change around, like collectively, this uh, uh, more yeah. acceptance of silence, more acceptance yeah. of like just taking time to listen to your inner voice and we're saying like inner voice it can be anything for each people right like I don't know for me it's something for you it's another thing uh, but uh, it's actually like a connection to first your body right mm -hmm. because we also neglect it a lot we don't listen to the signs when it says to us to you need to rest you need to rest it is like no i need to keep going and then oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, yeah. yeah and then you have the same thing with your other bodies like when you when you just don't take time to stay with some feelings or process some feelings yeah. and um or even thoughts like you're just struggling with a lot of <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is so annoying. We'll it's have to do video. another one where you have just a light setting prepared. Exactly. I was also, I was trying to only look at you so I don't like see that it's there's no image. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. It's it's yeah. A very interesting thing and I I I feel like um yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah it was a good thought I think yes it was I don't think I have any other topic cool yeah I'll be interested in uh, watching others you know yes yes we'll see what, 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 what we'll we'll, we'll 
will happen with this because I I just like it's this idea of sharing sharing I think it's important that what you're saying right now like communicating let's yeah. like talk more about stuff because sometimes we're just so well disconnected from our, ourselves and in others and we think we're alone on yeah. the experience and um we 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 are not <laughs> That's yeah, the, even, the, the, even the other day when I was I was talking with a friend and I was telling her how oh you know last week I was I was actually I was with a cold and then I there was this really complicated situation and I was feeling really sad for two or three days and she was like why didn't you call me and I was like oh yeah you know like it didn't even cross my mind it was just like I was so low and so sad that it didn't I in a way I thought that I had to deal with it myself but then I was like it felt so actually so nice to, that I could have called her yes like why didn't I call her and it was so nice to talk to her like she was like you couldn't you, why didn't you call me if you were so bad and such a yeah you know? yeah it's true so it's also important to know you can call people and feel better also you know yes yeah, friends are true. Poor. <laughs> yeah. it's true it's good to take things out of our chest yeah. and just like yeah well a balance I think a balance between um healing knowing how to heal alone in a way like by yourself but also balance between that and um sharing with other people yes you can and feel support both. right yeah. because when you're you're, dealing with it yeah you're you. healing from a physical or emotional wound <laughs> doesn't yes. matter um it's good to feel supported and it's good to feel supported by yourself of course but yeah. It's also something that I feel we're all learning. It's also to how to ask for help <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. It's very yeah. hard because this this world has told us like you can do it alone, you don't need anybody else, and blah blah blah. Yeah. And, and no, we're here for each other. And if yeah, it's good to to have that balance not just run away and just telling people everything that's happened to you because that's also like bypassing healing right it's like bypassing yeah, 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 yeah. your own um internalization and integration of what's happening to you and just yes. bombarding it to somebody else <laughs> it's like it has to be that that balance yeah yes so. it's true so it was, yeah, I, I, I thank you so much. Um, I, I'm sure we will do another one. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah, in some some months, because now we're going yes, to be yes. very busy ladies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm so, feeling it. Yeah, also we can think of other things to talk about, you know. Like, or <clears throat> it's true. Um, questions that we want to talk about. And all that. Yes. Cool. <laughs> yes. It was yeah. such a lovely conversation. Thank you. And... Yeah, I hope everything goes well with your projects. Oh, yeah. and, and if you have something to share in those regards, are you going to be playing right now? What well, yeah, are you yeah, I'm are releasing going to record. I am going to record and I'm going to release a single on the 21st of October and then one in December. Second of December. Good. It goes well. Yeah, so then those are my two releases, just singles, so no, no EPs or LPs, but um, mm -hmm. and the yeah, December one will have a video, and uh, yeah, I'm only, I only have a show in Brussels, but that's in uh, 28th of October. 28th of October, so pretty busy time right now for you, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I will leave your links down for people to follow your work follow you i don't know follow me and tell me i said follow me everywhere but everywhere <laughs> yeah everywhere Talk me, Talk Talk me everywhere. everywhere. yeah Talk follow follow me. in the universe and astral planes and other dimensions and instagram also included yeah. <laughs> youtube and blah 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 it's true so that's it, my dear. Thank you.
Bye-bye. <laughs>